Oh, I'm counting on him, aren't you? See, here's the, here's the question. Man does not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The problem with that one generation was they just didn't believe God. I mean, God did all these amazing, amazing things. He promised all his amazing things. And no matter how much he did all that, they didn't believe him. And this is what it's coming down to. God is wanting to establish something that is so foreign to the human mind that it's just, there's no way to describe it. It is foreign for us to say, God is all I need. I love him. I trust him. No matter what circumstance he puts me in, he is faithful. He has an answer when nothing else makes any sense. I mean, what better example do you have than a bunch of, than millions of people out in the desert with nothing to eat and God feeds them? And God gives them everything they stand in need of. Their shoes didn't even wear out. I mean, what a picture of the God we serve and what he's able to do. And God wants us to come to a greater place of rest and trust and confidence in God so that we will take these things and distressing as they may be, just bring them to God and say, God, I know you love me. God, I know you're doing something that's necessary in me and I submit to your hand. I look for your provision because I'm in over my head here, Lord. I don't know what to do. But I stretch forth my hand, Lord. It's, it's a position of humbling. It's a position of, of confession of my inability and my need. But it's also a confession of who you are, Lord, and how much you love me. I know you're faithful. And so I'd, I'd make a choice here, Lord. I make a choice to put my hope into, in, in, your, in my trust in you. Oh, there is a God whose, whose heart, his eyes are searching for people like that. You don't have to be the high and the mighty somebody. You can be somebody that in your own eyes, you're just nobody. But you're not nobody to him. You matter to him. He loves you. Praise God. So here's a God who makes them hunger and feeds them. But he's teaching that they, they not live by bread only, but on every word. It's the reliability. It's the, the critical, essential element of the word of God. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and revering him, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing into the valleys and hills, and so forth. He goes on to describe the fruitfulness of it and warns them when they get there and they start enjoying it, don't forget what God has been teaching you. Oh, praise God. Uh, I guess I was thinking of another scripture, but there's, there's scriptures in the, uh, in the prophets about how the Lord, well, no, it's right here. Your clothes, in verse 4, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during those 40 years. Know then in your heart, know this, get, get this in your head. Fix your brain, wrap your mind around this fact. This needs to be the guiding principle. No. Then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Now, discipline in the minds of many people is a negative thing. It is not. We equate discipline with punishment. God does not punish his children he disciplines, he trains, he allows things to teach, he allows things to build, uh, you know, the proper judgment, proper understanding, like he's describing here. He didn't say, you did something bad, whap. That's not the spirit of God. That God doesn't do that with any of his children, ever. Always his spirit is one of nurturing, of training, of teaching. Yes, he has to use difficult things at times, but it's never because he's angry or rejecting. It's always because of his heart of love toward you. Sometimes we get hard-headed and he, and he knows that going that, allowing us to go that way will lead us into trouble. And he has to do something important and drastic to get us to stop. But he's not doing it because he's angry. He's doing it because he loves us. Because he wants to pull us back from the terrible from the direction we're going so that we can go in a good way 
Oh, thank God that we serve this kind of a God. I want to love him. I want to trust him. I want to put my, all of my heart's trust in this, in this God. He's, he's what a father ought to be. He loves his children. Oh, thank God. And all of his design for us is to bring us to something that is beyond our power. To even begin to imagine. I just want to trust him this morning. I thank him for the things that I'm experiencing. I thank him for the things you're experiencing too. But you know, we all need to do that for ourselves and for one another and, and support one another and pray and love and be patient and just simply become. Allow God to shape us. We are the clay. And let's be the clay. Let's quit fussing and fighting and, and struggling and wondering and God has given us enough in this word that we, have, we can understand what's going on. What he wants from us is a heart of trust that looks to him in every circumstances of life, every circ all the circumstances of life, and says, Lord, I trust you, I love you, I'm going to serve you no matter what. But you are going to have to make, you're going to have to do in me because I'm, way, I'm over my head here, Lord. But you brought me here, and I know that you didn't bring me here to drown me. I know that you're here to bring me through, and I praise you. Bless the Lord. Can you praise the Lord this morning? Is he worthy? Yes. Praise God. This has been wonderful. I, Lord gave me a simple thought. Uh, I'll conclude the service with it. Nobody has anything else, but in 1 Thessalonians 18, or 5.18, he says, uh, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And you know, I, I just take God at His word. You know that I can give thanks for these things because in Romans eight twenty eight He says that all things work together for our good, all things to them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. You know, I, like Dorsey said, you know, I I just like to see my trial disappear, but I'd be a fool to pray for that because my trial is a blessing. My trial is a thing that is shaping me to be more like Jesus Christ and. I just take him at his word. I can that all everything that comes my way is a blessing. I guess the Lord's really blessing me abundantly because I've got a lot of trials to face. But praise God. Does anybody have anything else?